Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, we're talking about dates. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna pick up where Adam left off. So this video, not something I, you know, got from a customer or an idea. Just picking up from my homie, right? The other guy, the other guy in the cube left off talking about dates. He created this cool date table using a nice DAX expression, but now I wanna use this date table. I wanna do some time-based, some temporal analysis. How do you do it? Well, you guys know, right, how I like to do this, right? So the first place I'm gonna start is where? Let's head over to my desktop. Okay, so take a look at this report. What I like to do is I'd like to compare the current year gross, you know, sales, um, movie sales for by studio. And so I'm looking at 2016 and I see that Warner Brothers had the most, but my my calculation's not working. What's wrong with it, right? I'm just using same period. I'm just using same period last year in the DAX expression. Why isn't it working? Well, by default, you guys know how it goes, right? If, you know, you gotta do certain things to make those time-based calculations work when you bring in your own date table. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways, but then I'm gonna show you the new feature, the new feature that was released in the February 2000 update, 2018, 2018 update that just simplifies this whole thing. All right, back to my desktop. Um, so after I create my measure, what do I do, right? So typically, when, if you're, especially when you're working with the data warehouse, what does your data team do, right? The guys that design the data warehouse, when they design out the model, especially on the date table, so I'm gonna go over to my date table here, they design a smart key. And this smart key is usually there for performance purposes, right? It's better to join on an integer than a date. Um, and so, but what happens is when I import this into the desktop, so check it out, import this into the desktop, it automatically, establishes that relationship between those two date keys and that just doesn't work in the Power BI desktop. Well, it didn't work, right? It doesn't work. And so one of the workarounds was to go and, you know, kind of, if the date existed, you can maybe convince your DBA or whoever your data warehouse person is to allow you to pull that in or maybe add it to the, you know, both the fact table that you're joining to or whatever table you're joining to and the date table. And maybe they'll make that modification, you update it and pull it in. If they don't, then you'll have to write some M or some DAX to bring those in. Then you establish the relationship on those columns, kind of like I do here, right? So I go here, instead of using my smart date key, I go and find the actual date, which in my case is the, oh, where are you? Release date. And then I join up on the actual date in my date table and I click OK. And then I go over here to the visualization and it works. So that's one workaround. Requires some steps, requires some work, but you guys know how I am. Not lazy, just efficient. And that's just not efficient enough. My man Marco, what's up Marco? See you in London in a couple of weeks. He said, hey Patrick, when I posted a video about this before, I don't remember which one, he hit me up when he was like, hey Patrick, go check out my blog. And I'll give you the link to his blog. Um, I have an easier way to do it. And so that way, what Marco did was, check this out. He went over and he's got this Marcus date table. So by using this approach, I don't have to modify the dates. I don't have to change relationships. I can join up on those. I can join on those smart keys, and then I'm kind of you know behind the scenes marking it as a date table. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go back here to my relationship, switch it back to my smart keys, click OK, and then add a relationship between the date in the Marcus date table and the actual date. All right, it creates that relationship, switch over, now it works, right? Still a little work, still a little work to me, still. While that's a little easier than what I did before, still too many steps. I'm looking for the easy way out with this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna delete this relationship. Let's get this deleted, bam. Just to show you, just to show you, just to make sure there's nothing up my sleeves, right? Just to show you, after that deletes, we go back, it doesn't work in the February 2018 update of the desktop, guess what the product team did? Guess what they did? <laughs> Mind blown. You guys remember Excel, right? You use Power Pivot. You remember the old Power Pivot stuff? It's not old, people still use it, right? In Excel, they had an option to mark as date table. Also, if you use SSAS, you had an option to mark as date table. They finally brought it to the desktop. Check it out, right? So what you do is click on modeling in the ribbon, select your date table, 
all you need to do is mark as date table and select your column. So be sure to read this, right? So the column must be of the data type date and it must contain a unique, right? Must contain only unique values, so a distinct listing of dates, just like the other requirements in SSAS and Power Pivot, right? So go ahead and choose that column date. This is also going to get rid of all those hidden virtual tables that they create for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now, bam. So I click away and now it just absolutely works. It's like magic. Whew, right. I love magic. Mm, sometimes I when I was little, I said I was going to be a magician. No, I wasn't. All right. What do you guys think? I'm curious. These two methods that I showed, these kind of workarounds, what are you doing? Did you use them? You have other approaches? If you do, and any other comments and questions, post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in, Guy in the Cube channel, please be sure to subscribe. If you like my video, give it a thumbs up. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Boom, 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 boom. Okie dokie, okie dokie, ready to...